Hello, in our ninth tutorial we're going to introduce a few more useful functions, well, to do with counting and summing, so adding up uh, numbers, but this time using criteria to make our process a little bit more specific. Right, this may be a bit deja vu because I use very, very similar scenarios from a, a lack of imagination. We've got some products here which are related to fruit, so just fruit on its own, also a couple of juices. So maybe we've got a supermarket and they are We've got a stock level, right? We've got maybe the size of product, uh, how many how many items come with each pack, and how many items the supermarket has in stock, and then the price of each pack on its own. So perhaps the supermarket wants to figure out the total value of their stock. And what you could do, you could add another column over here, maybe saying value, right? And we could just do a quick formula, like we did loads of videos ago now, and multiply our stock level by our price like so auto fill down We're not multiplying by the pack size because you know the stock is in this case regarding a single pack and we could then do a sum if we wanted to work out the total value and use a range of in this case f4 to f10 and we get a, a nice total like that now that did not take very long so I'm not saying this is going to save a ton of time but another function we could use instead to avoid adding this extra column is some product. This function is fairly or can be fairly complex. I don't really think it needs to be made complex for most purposes. I'm sure for some purposes it, it, it will get harder to use but for our purpose here just really we're multiplying two ranges together and adding them up that is what some product does so some, when you're summing something you're adding up when you are making a product you are multiplying it so here we are multiplying two items the stock level multiplied by the price for each row and then adding up that in total and so this function sort of encap encapsulates this entire process in just one function so now I am going to you can see our prompt says array 1 array 2 and so on it doesn't give us a precise number of arguments it needs you can add as many as you want to and what it does in the first argument it takes a range so that's what an array is a range of values and in this case our first sort of list our first range is our stock level and now in my second argument I can following the comma select my second range which is our price and if I close this off and press enter what it's going to do is just going to multiply each one together and then add up this and form a cumulative total so we do get the same result as we did just when we did it individually ourselves. So it can be a good way to save a bit of time and also to show off use of a slightly more advanced function. We may have looked at this before, but just in case we haven't, the count function returns how many cells you put in the range. So if I do count and then select uh, the stop level over here and press enter, I should get seven because I have seven in my selection there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's counting how many instances. If I try count with text data, so if I now select my products over here, B4 through B10, I get zero because count doesn't work with text. If I want to count text instances, I have to change this to count A, and then press enter, and I get seven in that case. Likewise, if I do count A and select my numerical data, um, that also works, but um, it just doesn't work with, uh, count doesn't work with text. But if we want to limit our count to a more specific criterion, maybe we say how many Apple products are there? Well, we can use the count if function to do this. So count if. So kind of combining the principle of an if function, we have a condition to the count function, kind of a combination of the two. Except we're not dealing with conditions when we use count if. We are calling them criterion or criteria. So on count if. And we have two arguments to this. We have the range, first of all, followed by the criteria, as I say. So my range, in this case, if I want to see the Apple, how many Apple products we have, I can select our product name. So that is our range, B4 through to B10. Now, my second argument requires a little bit more explaining. I can put, so if I want to get just apples, I could type in apples like this, inside quotes, because we're referring to text. And now, we, when I press enter, I get one. Because what it's doing is going through this range and comparing each item in this range to our criteria. In this case, it was apples. So really, it's matching our cell value to apples in this case. And if they match, it's adding one to it. So we've kind of got like a half 
condition here. Normally you might have like cell B4 equals apples. We don't need to leave a B4 equals apples. We just put the apples and it sort of matches up for us. So here it's going through. Oops, let's not do that. It's going through and um, we just have one instance of apples. Well, kind of we do because in cell B9 we have apple juice and in cell B10 we have apple as an ingredient of tropical juice. So really, ideally, I'd like this count to be not one, but three. That's what it should be ideally. The issue is that apples does not directly match apple juice or the tropical juice item. So in order to have a little bit more relaxed search in a way, we want to use what we call wildcards. So wildcards are a fancy way of saying it's a character which can replace some other character. And in Excel, we have um, three examples. We have the asterisk, we have the question mark, and we have the tilde, um, this little symbol. And like I say, they replace one or more characters. So actually, the asterisk replaces zero or more characters. So we don't exactly know how many characters it's going to replace. The question mark replaces exactly one. And the tilde is an escape character. So if we want to use an asterisk in our normal text, we're going to put a tilde before it so that Excel doesn't treat it like a wildcard, it treats it like a normal asterisk and not a multiplication either. Okay, so um, what I can do, if I now go back to my formula up here, we have count if, we have our range, and we have our criteria. Well, if we just change this criteria to apple, let's try apple singular first of all. Now we get zero because this doesn't match anything because it's trying to, you know, it's comparing apples to apple and it doesn't match. The case doesn't matter, so this can be lowercase, uppercase, but it's still apple is not the same as apples. So what I can do is add an asterisk after this apple to signify one or more characters, or zero or more characters, I should say. And now we get a count of two, because what it's doing, it's going apple with anything after it. And so we have apples. We also have apple juice, because we have apple, which starts matching fine, and then we have a space and then juice, which also, because the asterisk covers it, is fine as well. The issue is for the apple in the tropical juice, we are not counting that. So instead, I can also add an asterisk before apple as well. We don't care what comes before it. We don't care what comes after it. We just want any apple. And now we get our correct count. If I replace the second asterisk with a question mark, we're going to just get one because we're saying we don't care how many characters come before apple but we want just exactly one afterwards, which only applies to our first item in B4 because we have nothing before Apple, which is fine, and we have only one character after Apple, which is VS to make it plural. So we've got to be a little bit careful, but if you want to catch just any substring, just add an asterisk before and after your value. So that is applying it to text. We can also apply it to numbers. Let's say this supermarket has a budget range, maybe uh, how many uh, budget products how many budget products, maybe their budget range is class as being £1.50 or under, just hypothetically. So you can also use count if to do this. So if I go equals and count if again, and in this case, my range is going to be among my prices. So I just drag over these values, do a comma. And now my criteria needs to be not just, we're not matching it to a string, we're doing a evaluation here. So we want to see if our product is less than, is less than we said £1.50, 1.5. The issue is if I try this, I get an error because we are, we're not quite used to doing this, but we've still got to make sure this criterion is inside quotes. So it's not quite text, but it just is how this function works. So I've surrounded it and it's not, you can see it's not a full um, condition because we're missing something on the left hand side, but really as it's going through, it's comparing each item based on this criteria. So now I press enter, I get four because we have four products less than £1.50, we have bananas, we have kiwis, and we have apple juice and tropical juice as well, so four in total. If I wanted to maybe um, ask what is the total cost, what is the total cost of budget products, I can use a very similar function, but in this case, sum if. So sum if, you know, for summing something as we said before, this is adding up. So same sort of idea, in this case sum if, my first argument again is going to be my range, which is again our price, our prices. Then our first argument after this is our criteria. So again, I'm gonna use exactly the same criteria, so less for 1.5, again in quotes. And we can leave it at two arguments, we'll look at the third argument in just a sec. But if I press enter on this one, we now get 4.1. So four versus 4.1, well this is because in this case it's adding up bananas, so 1.20, plus 50p, plus 1.20, plus 50p, 
plus one pounds twenty, that's three pounds sixty plus fifty p, which is four pounds ten pence. I can convert this to currency if I want to to make it clearer between the two um, values. Okay, let's say maybe we're trying to now work out the total cost of Apple products. So sort of doing the same sort of thing as we did in our first formulae up the top for count if. Well, let's do sum if for this one and make sure our range is our fruit products this time. And I only want to sum up the ones which are meeting our criteria we did earlier about it being an apple. So we add the asterisk, do a one after as well. Now, if I present it, I get zero because what this is doing is trying to... <laughs> First of all, it's finding all the instances of Apple or apples in this product list. So it's got a count of three, but now it's trying to add up those values and it can't add up text. And so it's trying to add up effectively three zeros and so get zero as its result. So if we want to both use this range, but also add up something else, namely the price, we can add a third argument to this. And this third argument is the range is actually going to add up. We don't have to add it, we didn't add a third argument to the previous one, but now if in my third argument I select my prices, like so, so we have our first range, which is where it's going to look for our condition, our, our criteria, I should say, and then once it's found an item which matches this criteria, it's going to use its corresponding value in this second range to actually, you know, cumulatively add up. So now I press enter and I get the equivalent of £4.60, because what it's doing is adding up £2.20 plus £1.20 plus £1.20 again, which is £4.60. So count if and sum if are good at doing fairly basic tasks, but limiting it based on a criteria. And a criteria is not quite a condition, it's called kind of like half of a condition, but it's trying to match a value against this criteria. If it matches, it's going to include it in its function, either just counting it or actually adding up a value. So this trial now is relatively simple. I've got this table here, which to save you time copying it, I've got a link in the description to the file and also the solution as well. And based on this table, using just the functions from this video, because of course you could just do this in your head or using previous functions. So really count if, sum if, sum product are the three main ones I would say. Try and work out the total cost. So without using an, a, another column, how many products are available online only and how many tablets will be bought in total. And like I said, there'll be a solution along with the actual file in the description.